For the start of chapter 7, we're going to practice um, solving systems of equations by graphing. So your essential question is, how do I get the solution to a system of equations by graphing? Now this process is very similar to graphing two functions on a graph. So this will not be very hard for you guys. Um, so systems of equations are when we have two or more linear equations together. So we have two equations that both of the graphs are lines and we're graphing them together on the same graph. Now systems can be of more than two, but usually in this case, in this chapter, we're only going to do a system of two equations. Now the solution to a system is any ordered pair that makes all of the equations in the system true. So for example, um, an ordered pair would be something like 1, 2, and you'll remember that 1 represents x and 2 represents y. And that means that I could plug in 1 for x and 2 for y into both equations, and it would be a solution for both equations at the same time. So to solve a system of equations by graphing, let's say we have y equals 2x minus 3 and y equals x minus 1. If I was to graph both of these equations, I should be able to find the point where they cross, and that would be where a solution is for both equations at the same time because all the points on each line are going to rep represent solutions for that line, but then the point where they both have in common is going to be the solution for both of them together. So I have y equals 2x minus 3, so I would start here with the y-intercept, which is negative 3, and my slope is 2 or 2 over 1, so I would go up to right 1, because I'm doing rise over run. And I would put as many points on your graph as possible, because you don't know where they're going to intersect. So it's, it's really nice to um, make your lines go all the way across the graph, so you can find the point where they cross. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line between these two points. To adjust my line just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to graph the other one in red so we can tell which one is which. So then I'm going to start with the y-intercept on the second equation, which is negative 1. And my slope, there's no number in front of x, which means that my slope is 1 or 1 over 1. So I would go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, and then we can now see where the two points cross. So I'm going to draw my second line and adjust it just a little bit. And so the point where both lines cross is this point right here. So I need to say what the location of that point is on the graph. So if I was telling somebody what this point was, it would be the point 2, 1, because that is the location of this point on the graph. So if I were to check that point, by plugging it into both equations, I should be able to plug in 2 for x and 1 for y, and it should work for both equations. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we did was we graphed both equations separately. We found the point where the lines cross, and then we found the solution. So our check is to plug in 2 for x and 1 for y. So if I go back up to my system, I had y equals 2x minus 3. and y equals x minus 1. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x and 1 for y. So I would get 1 equals 2 times 2 minus 3. And I'm going to see if that works. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 would equal 1. So that works. Then for the second equation, I would have 1 equals 2 minus 1, which is also true. So this is the solution for both equations. Now sometimes you will have systems with no solution. So how could a system have no solution? Well, we know that the solution is the point where the two lines cross. So the only way that they could have no solution is if the lines don't cross, which means that they would have to be parallel. 
And if we look at the slopes of these lines, they both have a slope of 2, so these are going to be parallel. But I can prove that by graphing them. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these. So if I started with this one, the y-intercept is 1. And my slope is 2, or 2 over 1. So I would go up 2, right 1. And then I'm going to draw my line. And then I'm going to graph the other one in blue so we can tell the difference. I would start at negative 1, and my slope is also 2. So I can see that they go right along next to each other, but they're never going to cross because these lines have the exact same slope. So they can never cross each other. So they're going to be real close next to each other, but they're never going to cross. So this would be an example of one that had no solution. All right, now let's try a system with infinitely many solutions. Well, let's think about how that's possible first. Okay, if it has one solution, it crosses at one point. If it has no solution, it doesn't cross at all. So if it has infinitely many solutions, that means it would have to cross at every single point possible. So the only way for that to happen is, if, is for it to be the exact same line on top of another one. So if I look at these two equations, I have y equals negative 1 half x plus 2, and then 2x plus 4y equals 8. Well, I can't graph this second equation right now as is, because um, if I try to graph this equation now, I don't have it in slope-intercept form, so I don't know what the y-intercept is, I don't know what the slope is, so first I have to get y by itself in that second equation so that it's in slope-intercept form. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and then these would cancel out, and I would have 4y equals negative 2x plus 8. Now keep in mind, we want our equation to look like y equals mx plus b, because that is slope-intercept form. So that is why I wrote the negative 2x part first. So then I'm going to divide by 4. So I would get y equals, and negative 2 fourths could reduce to negative 1 half x. So always make sure you can reduce your fractions if possible. And then 8 divided by 4 would just be positive 2. So now if you look, these two equations are the exact same line. So if I was to try to graph both of them, really I could only graph one because the other one would graph exactly on top of the first. So that's why there are infinitely many solutions because they would cross at every single point possible. So make sure that you go back and answer the essential question and write your summary.